Welcome, everybody. I'm so glad to see you all here. As people populate the room, I'll just take a minute to introduce myself and go over a couple of housekeeping things before we begin to paint together. My name is Lisa Mann, for those of you that don't know me, and um, I am an award-winning artist, a gallery owner, a teacher, and a counselor. And it is true that my work has been recognized internationally and in collections all over the world. But honestly, my favorite thing to do is to share the joy of creating art, and particularly abstract art, with folks like yourself. So I'm just so, so happy that you're here with me tonight. This is part of my Paint It Forward initiative. Um, I believe that we are all artists at heart and that sharing that joy of creating with others is truly a memorable and meaningful experience. So I'm just really happy to share the experience with you all and I'm honored that you chose to spend your time with me tonight. So I see some really fun, familiar faces. This is awesome. It's like having you all over to my studio, even though we're doing it virtually. Um, a couple of just tips as we go along, there's those three buttons on the right, three little red dots, and that's to open the chat box. So I will welcome you to introduce yourself. I know that there's folks from the four corners that are joining us tonight, and that's really fun. Hi, Tom. Hi, Jen. It's awesome. <laughs> um, so please feel free to introduce yourself, say where you're from if you feel like it, and also use that box to post questions. Um, this is a live painting demo, and at some point I'll take my gloves off and look at the box and then answer your questions. So um, please know that it's fine to keep the questions coming, and I will, I will get to them before the end of the evening. I have a couple surprises in store for us, so I hope that you stick around. There's some really fun things that are going to be happening. And um, this is being recorded. So I welcome you to sit back and relax if you want to, and then just replay it. You'll get a replay recording in about an hour after this is over. You're welcome to paint along with me if you want. And um, I'm officially inviting you to share your work on our Facebook page if you'd like. Um, it's a very warm and welcoming community. It's called Abstract Academy, and I've posted the link in the chat box. So please feel free to join, share your work, and be a part of a great community of supportive artists. I'd love to see what you created as a result of this. And I think without further ado, I am going to start to paint. I'm just going to give a quick sound check um, to make sure that everyone can hear me. And I am going to start. Okay, so I am starting our project today with a piece of multimedia artboard and a photograph. You could use any kind of um, hard surface to paint on. And I have a color wheel and I use a limited palette and for this painting I'm going to be using colors that are more or less opposite one another on the color wheel. I've got a greenish gold and a reddish violet that I'm going to be using. I'm using two different color greens that I'm showing you there and one violet and black and white. I might introduce some other colors later on, but I find that if I start with a limited palette, then I always know that my colors are gonna work with one another. And I've added a little blue. See how that's gonna work. I mix all of my paints with cold wax medium. You can do this project with any kind of paint. You could even do it with markers or watercolors. I prefer oil with cold wax medium. And I'll show you how I'm going to use that. And I begin by taping the borders around my painting. I do that simply because I really like the way that it looks with nice clean edges when the painting is done. Cold wax medium, for those of you that aren't familiar with it, is a paste. And when mixed with paints, it allows the paints to hold more body and texture. And it also makes the drying time um, go much faster. It allows me to work in layers 
and each layer dries a little bit faster and holds more body, which is why I use the cold wax medium. And um, this is most definitely not a step-by-step -step approach to painting. It is um, painting from an intuitive level. I will give you some tools um, and give you an inkling of what I go through for my process and what some of my classes are like. And then I invite you to take the tools that I give and turn this painting into your own work of art, which is part of the exciting piece of the process. So I'm looking at the general feel of the painting. Rather than being very um, strict about exactly what I'm painting, I'm noticing these curvy lines and the flow of, of what feels like that landscape. And I am beginning simply by creating some curvy lines on my paper. And um, once the paper is activated, I like to say, I, I begin by looking and responding to it. And it allows for some really surprising results. I'm just taking the original image and just to get an idea of some general shapes. I'm outlining it with a marker so you can see. And I've got some darker shapes. I've got some shapes that are what I would call mid-tone in the middle, and I've got some lighter shapes where the pathway is. Here's my palette, and um, I start with a big um, blob, for lack of a better word, of cold wax, and that's what you see on the palette right now. And I'm going to place my colors on my palette, and then I'll show you what I do with that. I think of painting as a, really as a form of mindfulness or a form of meditation in some ways because I really just focus on the paints in front of me and it's a, it's a lovely experience to clear your mind and focus on the paints and how they are responding to one another and the painting that is emerging in front of me. So if I set my palette up ahead of time, it really helps with my ability to just respond to the painting as opposed to worrying about or thinking about which colors I will, I'm going to be using. So for starters, I'm going to mix a little bit of cold wax with a little bit of paint. And I would say it's about 30% cold wax to 70% paint, more or less. And that's what I'm doing here. And once I have those all mixed, I will then begin to create a palette of colors, quite frankly, that I find pleasing. I don't aim to make it realistic, necessarily. I aim to make it something that is evocative of what I remember or the scene, the way that it felt, colors that are pleasing to me. That's far, part of the fun of abstract painting, to really express yourself. So, for example, I might take a little bit of green and mix it with uh, a very small amount of its opposite color on the color wheel, which is purple. And I want to show you how that really creates a much darker toned down version of the green. You get a very neutral color when you mix colors that are opposite one another on the color wheel. And then, for example, what happens if I um, mix that same green and this time add a little bit of uh, perhaps white to the pile of that neutral color. And what you'll see is a really beautiful light neutral grayish tone. And if I get a color that I love, I keep it on my palette. And if I don't love it, I keep working it. So in this case, I decided what happens if I just added a little bit of black to that. And I really love that color that came out. So I just keep mixing color by color um, with varying amounts of each color and end up with a palette that I find pleasing, that speaks to me. Right here I'm mixing the two different greens and the color is just so beautiful to me. And I continue to ask myself the question, what if? What if I mix a little bit of purple with that green? What if there's more purple than there is green or vice versa? You'll see with a, just a different shade of green in the purple, the neutral tone that I get is so very different than the first neutral tone that I started out with.
So to me, this is really the beginning of um, my focus um, of just really um, thinking about the colors and enjoying them and responding to them before I even begin to paint. The next thing I'm going to do is respond to the flowing squiggle lines that I created. I'm using a clay shaper tool, it's called, it's like a, a little bit of a squeegee. I don't paint with um, a paintbrush usually. I like tools that are a little less exact. It keeps it very free for me. And right now what I'm doing is um, simply putting some paint down and thinking about if I want the paint to follow the lines that I've created. Maybe I follow some of the lines I've created and some I go over. I allow myself to freely and playfully paint outside the lines. And I don't necessarily have a plan of action other than if I'm using the picture as a guide, I know that I want some light area to flow through the picture. And that's what I'm, what I'm playing with now. And again, I'm not trying to recreate exactly what I've got on the, on the picture. It's my interpretation of it. And really what I was struck with was sort of the flowing feel of that, of that pathway. I'm laying in some color, and maybe this is potentially the sky. Um, again, not trying to make it overly realistic. I, I felt like painting a purple sky, and that is what I'm allowing myself to do right there. And now I'm beginning to fill in some of the other shapes, um, thinking about the shapes of the mountains. And again, not necessarily confining myself to the lines that I originally made, but using them potentially as a guide if I find the shapes pleasing. Sometimes by doing this, I end up with very unexpected shapes um, that are sometimes quite powerful. As I lay in sections of color, I am mindful of the fact that some of the shapes were dark some were light and some were mid-tone in the middle. So I made sure on my palette that I had dark, light, and medium shapes, and that is exactly what I'm putting down on my paper now. When I paint this way, when we paint this way, um, it, which I would call intuitive painting, uh, the biggest gift we can give ourselves is turning our inner critic off and just trusting that um, we have all the time in the world to make this absolutely stunning and beautiful and speak from our heart. So I allow um, a lot of chaos to happen. And within that chaos, um, I create calm and beauty. And that's what makes it so exciting and powerful. And um, I like to think of each painting that I create like the beginning of a long journey where I don't exactly know where I'm going. <laughs> the first day of summer and I'm boarding the train and uh, I'm, I'm going to keep going until I get to a place that I feel like exploring. And that is exactly what happens with each and every painting that I, that I begin with. by having my palette ahead of time and some shapes on the paper already to just respond to that really helps turn my own inner critic off because I just know that I'm responding to the painting at hand rather than thinking or overthinking or um, judging what I've got on the paper so far. It also allows for a whole lot of playfulness in the painting process and some really um, playful, exciting compositions and shapes and colors begin to emerge. At this point, the painting itself is taking quite a departure from um, the picture that I've got in front of me. 
Um, there's still something that's reminiscent about it. Um, and I'm okay with that. I'm just going to continue on. Um, at, at some point in every painting, um, the paint begins to, the paints begin to take over. The painting begins to have a life of its own. And it's my job as an artist to respond to that. And um, that's about what's happening here. I'm choosing to just dig in with the side of my tool because I, I feel like it. It's reminding me of some of the grasses that are there. And I'm allowing the colors to mix and blend with one another partially. And I like that too. I also like to think of this kind of painting as um, exploring the possibilities. So I just continue to ask myself, what if? And I continue exploring all sorts of possibilities on my canvas. And I find it to be quite calming and quite healing, as do many students, to paint in this way. It's a lovely thing to be able to explore so many possibilities and to know at the end of the day, if I create something that I'm not that happy with, I can just keep going. Um, it's, a, it's a lovely approach that feels quite freeing. I've almost got my first layer done. And once I have my first layer done, I'm going to take my gloves off and see if there's any questions um, and take a moment, even just for a couple minutes, um, to answer some questions and let this first layer dry before I begin to evaluate it and continue my work. Okay, again, there's my original painting, I mean, my, my original picture. And here's what I've got for starters, and I'm looking to see, I'm matching up. I've got some dark shapes, I've got some light shapes, and I've got some mid-tone shapes. And when I, when I look at it, if I squint, sometimes it's hard because the colors take over, but I see that my darks aren't quite dark enough for my taste. So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to impose um, a little bit more dark values into the shapes that I've got there. Sometimes if I don't quite know what to do next, it, it is just like one foot in front of the other. I just begin to paint. And sometimes just by placing a line in a different, in a different way or a slightly different color, other possibilities begin to open up if I pay close enough attention to the painting. Here's a little sneak peek of where the painting is heading, and I just invite you to post your questions in the chat box while I take my gloves off and take a look at them so I can answer them. That's part one. I'm going to let it set up just for a minute and check in at the chat box and see if there's any questions that I can answer about the process or anything else. And I have my first of two surprises for you coming right up. A few more things before we return to our painting to bring it to completion. The first of which is I want to show you this painting, which is a painting that I created from the same exact photograph, the same exact scene, but just with a slightly different colorway. And uh, like I had said, that this is an intuitive form of painting, and um, each time I come to canvas, things come out slightly differently, so I wanted to share with you um, this idea. And I really can't wait to see what you all come up with in your interpretations of your landscape scenes. 
And the second thing is I want to introduce you to several offers that are limited and I've got going on right now. The first of which is a 25% off my online class, which is an intro to creating a series of abstract landscapes in cold wax. So um, when you enroll, it's instant access um, to a video series, and I'll take you step by step on everything from A to Z to use cold wax medium and to create your own series of artwork using um, oil and cold wax medium and creating a really gorgeous set of abstract landscape paintings. And I'll introduce you to many of the tools in addition to the ones that we've talked about for this little mini class on how to create abstract work. So I will include the link in the chat box to that so you all have access to that. And the second thing that I want to tell you is for a limited time and for a limited number of people, I have a new class starting September 1st for a small cohort of folks, and I'm offering a really nice 40% discount on that. And again, I'm going to put this offer up in the chat box. And this is a really comprehensive, complete course called Calm, Courage, and Creativity. And I will introduce you to the tools of not only how to create these abstract paintings, but the why, which I have felt has been a really important piece of my own artwork. Um, when we can speak from a courageous mindset from our heart, it really um, opens up so many possibilities for super powerful work, not only to the public, but for ourselves as well. It's limited because um, I take just a small cohort of people and it's a complete six week course. You'll have access to not only videos, but um, instruction from me and live FaceTime calls. And we will really explore again, not only the how, but the why also of why we create the work and why it's an important piece of the puzzle for our own expression. And um, I'll spend lots of time exploring how creating artwork like this can really evoke a sense of calm within each of us and how to tap into that um, healing power of art. So I'm putting that offer up right now in um, the chat box. And once again, that's limited um, in the number of folks that I can take. So I would encourage you, if you're interested in that, to please um, hop on board while the offer still stands. Okay, let's see where we're at with our painting and bring it to closure. Okay, let me show you how I ended the painting. Well, now is the time to evaluate what I've got so far and decide what I want to see more of and what I would maybe perhaps like to see a little bit less of. I call that that dance of revealing and concealing. So I'm noticing that the viewer's eye goes right towards that purple. And what I want to do as an artist is make sure that the viewer's eye is led all over the painting and continues to move around the painting in an intriguing way. So I want to create other points of interest besides just that purple. And I've decided to do that, to do that with some color. And so now I'm introducing some of that bright green to see if I can get some of that effect going on. I'm really looking forward to seeing what you all come up with with your paintings. So I really do encourage you to please um, join the private Facebook group and um, post your work. I'd love to see it. And it's a great uh, supportive community to share and be a part of. So I will tell you uh, that sometimes all the time when I paint this way, some paintings come together very quickly and easily, and some take much more time. And there is not necessarily rhyme or reason behind that. So there's a point in a painting where I have these aha moments, and I think I had mentioned to you, I just continue to move around the painting as if putting one step in front of the other, one section of paint, one area of beauty to work on, in front of another and suddenly things begin to open up. So I'm searching for that now. 
I'm altering shapes ever so slightly. I'm adding colors. I'm noticing again that I really do want more contrast between the lights and the darks. And so I'm continuing to play with the color of that pathway. I really want it to draw the viewer's eye in. So I'm considering altering perhaps the color and I'm also altering slightly the shape. And again, playing with the palette knife, it allows me to be inexact in a pretty wonderful way. I paint in layers, so I allow the colors of the paints to mix with one another, um, not necessarily completely, just in certain sections. And that's what's happening now with that foreground area. I'm laying in a slightly different color and creating a little bit of texture and a little bit of interest. I'm remembering the sweeping movements in that landscape. And again, I, I try to paint the illusion of detail without really painting detail. So sometimes I will allow my hands or my palette knife to mimic the motion of whether it's the sky or the pathway, or in this case, the trees. And again, allowing the palette knife to dig in somewhat and create some texture. I do have lots of classes that I offer, some free, some not free, some that I've mentioned before, the, the really wonderful and in-depth class that is starting in September, as well as um, lots of courses for different types of paints and paintings, and I invite you to uh, take a look at my website and see if there's something there that you'd like to participate in. And um, for sure, please keep in touch on Facebook so that you can hear about other free webinars that are taking place and um, live events. This is all in honor of my Paint It Forward initiative because I believe we are all artists at heart we really do, and that um, it's such a joy to create and to um, share that creativity with others. So um, this is part of that initiative, and right now there's a, a giveaway happening for a free painting. A free original painting is being given away once a week, so I invite you to sign up for that. Right here I'm um, exploring the possibilities uh, with the colors of the mountainside and the, the textures. I'm trying to get the shapes to somehow speak with one another. The painting's not quite looking as unified and exciting as I would like it. Many of the colors are looking kind of muted. So again, I'm just beginning to explore and how can I make that um, a little more exciting for the viewer's eye and I'm adding some texture. Often when I paint like this, if I'm not doing it for a demonstration, um, I let the painting dry in between layers. This is a what I would call wet and wet technique. And um, the danger is that uh, you can create mud. And that is a little bit of what's happening here right now. When I say mud, I just say that the colors are not quite as vibrant as I'd like them to be. They're mixing a little bit because each layer is not dry as I'm painting on top of it. I really believe that um, watching my struggles um, is probably a more valuable tool in learning than watching me um, do a paint by number that's very hard to replicate. So. What you're watching now in real time is um, my colors are getting a little bit muddy and I'm, I'm fiddling with that and trying to think about that and figure out what can I do to try to bring this painting to closure.
often the shapes, the colors, the textures in the foreground are um, more vibrant, darker, more crisp and clear than those shapes and textures in the background. So I'm imagining the illusion of grasses that are closer to me and I want to make those a little bit darker and a little bit more detailed. I'm noticing that the viewer's eye are still drawn up to that purple. So I'm trying to institute more um, exciting, vibrant colors into the landscape to, to keep the viewer's eye in there. Sometimes when I am at this impasse where I'm not really sure what to do next, I switch tools and I've just done that here. So now I'm back to my clay shaper tool, which is that rubbered edge tool. And one of the things that you'll see happening um, in the next, when I show you the final, is that um, sometimes if I become too attached to something in a painting, it sort of blocks the flow of the whole painting. And I'm seeing that I'm attached to that purple in the sky. And um, I'm wondering if that might be part of the reason why I'm having a hard time with the painting. Often at this stage, what I would do is take a picture of the painting and let it dry overnight and then look at the picture and again, play that, play that dance of reveal and conceal. What am I really loving and I want to bring up more? Where, what are the treasures and what, what am I willing to just try concealing and seeing if that opens up other areas of the work? And again, I'm giving you a sneak peek of what the painting turned into. Um, I did let go of that purple, and one of the, my tricks is that I will often turn the painting upside down and work on it like that. And that is indeed what I did. I continued to finesse, reveal and conceal, and turn it upside down. So let me show you what I came up with, um, and then I have my second surprise for you guys. Um, I think I've said before, those of you that have taken classes with me, when I paint intuitively like this, sometimes the paintings come together quite quickly, and sometimes um, I have to wrestle with them a little bit. And this one required a little bit more imagination, and I'll show you how I brought it to closure. So I want to show you the photo I started with and the different phases that the pictures went through. I ended up turning it on its side, turning it upside down, and then accentuating the areas that I liked, that dance of reveal and conceal. And here's the final image I came up with. Sometimes it helps me to see it on a wall, and here it is on a wall. Thanks so much for joining me. Um, I hope to see your work on Facebook. Please don't be a stranger. And if you'd like to see what else, as a bonus, that I turned this particular landscape into, please stick around because I have a little surprise for you. So as promised, um, here's my second surprise. One of my favorite things to do sometimes is to see what else I can do with the painting, even though it's done. Um, and like I said, sometimes these paintings take on a life of their own, and it's my job as an artist to, to follow where the paints are going and what the picture is turning into. So. Um, I did let this set up ever so briefly, and then I painted over the entire thing and created um, a second painting from this. It takes about 15 minutes, and I would welcome you to see the very different and second painting that I created over this one using just pieces of it, but it turned into an unexpected and um, equally as beautiful but quite different landscape. So I'd like to share that with you. Well, I promised you a little surprise, and here it is. 
Just for fun, I decided, what would happen if I kept working on this painting? What would happen if I just continued to create and saw what else I could turn it into? So one of the things that I'll often do with my work is uh, I'll just keep going till I'm absolutely satisfied. I like the painting that I came up with a lot, but I want to show you what I would do sometimes if I wanted to continue exploring. So what I'm going to do here is um, begin fresh with a new palette. And I've chosen two other opposing colors in the color wheel, blue and gold. I had said sometimes when I really want to switch it up, I let the painting dry a little bit. And then I either introduce a new tool or a new color, and in this case, a new palette. And I'm mixing up a variety of um, colors from blue and gold, like I did with the first palette that we went through together and seeing how many different tones that I can come up with. I had mentioned to you that often paintings take on a mind of their own and I don't always know where they're going to end up. It's my job to pay attention. So the first thing right off the bat, I'm turning it upside down. I really feel like that helps to turn my brain off and um, just respond to the painting at hand instead of um, preserving the actual picture that's there. As in the first painting, I mixed up my paints with a mixture of about 70% paint and 30% cold wax. I see just by putting that blue sky, or if that is still the sky down, it changed the way um, the trees read. So I'm liking that. And um, here's a new kind of variation on the color. This is uh, a reddish pinkish that I achieved from red, a tiny bit of blue, and, and a lot of white. So it's a toned down kind of a pink. And if I haven't said it before, I'll say it now. I really believe that creativity takes courage. And sometimes putting a bold color like that down <laughs> takes courage. Like I said, it's just paint. I always know that I can paint over it. So down goes the red. And when I'm really watching and paying attention, um, I don't necessarily just uh, cover up an area without thinking about it. So you see sometimes I cover up part of an area to see if I want to leave part of the existing shape there. And I'm introducing a new variation for what I'm going to consider um, my dark tones. I've got a phthalo blue here which is nice and deep and dark. And like I said, the painting is somewhat set up, so I'm not as concerned about creating um, mud with my colors. And at this point, I'm really not sure if I'm going to keep the original composition or not. At this point, I'm considering what would it mean if I altered it slightly without changing it completely, and I'm just exploring that a little bit. You can see I'm playing that, that game, that dance of reveal conceal here. I'm putting some paint down and then wiping some off. Leaving some and wiping some off. Again, turning my painting to see if that opens up possibilities. I do have a new kids course that I'm teaching now online. Um, and I would invite you or your friends. Um, it's for elementary school kids and I'm super excited about that. So I'd invite you to check that out if you're interested.
I hope, I wonder if some of you after painting will decide to paint it forward yourself and share your creations with others. It's really pretty wonderful. I think I had mentioned before, sometimes there's a moment in the painting where you realize you're treating something too preciously. And the minute that you allow yourself to cover that up, um, things begin to open up. So I think that I am considering that idea right here, right now. Uh, am I willing to just cover it all up and see what can be revealed as a result of that? Much like that big and wonderful journey I talked about, I know that all the misadventures sometimes add up to how wonderful the adventure is in the end. And um, the, the chaotic moments in our paintings or misadventures can really lead to some rich and wonderful and meaningful results. At this point, this is in real time, I'm um, just exploring, exploring all these possibilities of what if, and I, I'm really not sure at this point what's going to happen. I just continue to play and explore until the painting begins to take a direction that, um, that seems wonderful, and it's definitely not there. I've covered up the nice composition and the, and the painting that I was happy with, and um, I would say that this painting is now going back through its adolescent phase. Again, I'm continuing to turn the painting to see if that opens up um, doors and lets me look at it in a new light. I use all sorts of interesting tools when I paint. Um, I've just shown you a couple here today. Um, sometimes I'll paint with paper towels. Sometimes I'll even paint with my hands, which is why I wear gloves. I do believe it's um, my, my job as an artist to explore as many tools and, and methods of self-expression that I can. And then it's my job as your teacher to help introduce you to all of these different tools in the hope that um, you will find something that really speaks to you and lets you express yourself. And I'm choosing to dig back through to the layers below and see what might be revealed that will be surprising. And that is a method that I'm going to continue with. I don't necessarily have a composition in mind. It's beginning to emerge and it's starting to look um, different than the composition that I began with and I'm, I'm good with that. 
Now, here's something that's happening. I got some color down there that um, I thought I liked, but I didn't. So I gave myself permission to scrape it off. Here I'm giving myself permission to um, go over that, that pinkish area that I wasn't really speaking to me, so now I'm, I'm going back over that with another color to try to blend the colors on the canvas itself to see if I can get something that's more pleasing. If you do choose to use oil and cold wax and you'd like more instruction, I mentioned that I have lots of classes. I do have classes on how specifically um, from the very beginning to use um, oil and cold wax paints. Um, one of the things that's important to do is to create um, something on a, a surface that's somewhat rigid. And in this case, it's a, it's a piece of multimedia artboard. I could also be using oil paper. Now I'm really giving myself permission to dig in and see what I can scrape back, what kind of interesting gems I might be able to find. You will receive a recording of this afterwards, which I invite you to, again, watch and rewatch, and then hopefully share your artwork on our Facebook page. And I know some of you might be wondering, how on earth is this going to come to be a, a painting in the end? But I, I'm just encouraging you to um, embrace the chaos as I do as I'm painting. And again, I just trust that I'm going to be able to work it out with the tools that I give you and quieting our minds. Um, it, it is amazing what begins to emerge. Sometimes if I put a color down and I don't love it, I allow myself to try to mix the colors on, on the painting itself. There's some colors underneath that are still wet. And um, again, I try to do this gently so I don't create mud, um, gently, gently and thoughtfully. What I'm beginning to notice as I'm putting down the screen is that um, really what's drawing the viewer's eye to me is the blue in the painting. The blue is quite powerful. So I'm considering how am I going to use that as a tool.
I was finding the amount of pink um, distracting. So I'm just uh, playing with the possibility of covering a little bit of that up. And now really um, exploring that color blue, which I'm finding so appealing. There's some happy accidents that happen sometimes when we paint like this. And right now in this section that I'm working on, there are some happy accidents that are beginning to happen as I scrape down to the layers below and reveal some of them and cover some of them up. There's some pretty pretty effects that are taking place. I'm mixing up more colors as I go with my limited palette that I've shown you. Um, sometimes when the painting begins to um, emerge, I might want more or less of, of a color that I don't have enough mixed up, and that's exactly what happened there. I'm just creating another dark. And I'm just allowing my tool to follow the shapes that have been organically created by my experimentation. I like that dark shape, but I'm just trying to break up the dark shape a little bit so it doesn't look like one big black blob. And again, reintroducing that um, blue, which I'm finding so pleasing.
So the top portion of the painting is beginning to take shape, at least in my mind. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm exploring the possibilities with the bottom half to see if I can make it seem as if it's connected to the top half. If I can create some sort of composition that makes sense. I'm liking what's happening and what I'm perceiving to be the sky. I'm thinking that that's a beautiful piece of the painting, at least for right now. And I'm beginning to just reinforce the areas and um, accentuate accentuate the areas that I'm that I'm feeling like are emerging as something beautiful. There are lots of visual languages that we that we use in abstract painting, and um, certainly shape is one of them. Color is another. Texture is another. So right now I'm I'm playing with color and shape in the foreground to see if I can um, finesse the painting. I talk a lot about using those visual languages in my online courses that I've been talking about. And again, all levels are welcome from very beginner to advanced. When I hold the tools that I'm using, I, I um, hold them rather loosely and playfully. I feel like the grip that I have in my tools um, does make a difference in, in um, the painting itself. And I want the paintings to feel loose and playful. And that is um, how, I, how I treat the tools that I use as well. So I'm getting towards the end of the painting, and again, if I had, um, if I decided that I was going to do this over several days instead of um, one sitting, I might at this point um, let it sit, take a picture, and let it dry um, so that I can continue to work on it without worrying about um, making mud. But in this case, I'm just going to continue working it um, with somewhat of a light touch and um, try to bring the painting to closure. So whether you choose to do one painting or two paintings, follow along um, rather closely, or um, make these creations of your own, I really do hope to see your work on Facebook and get to, new, get to know you and your paintings better. I'm really uh, happy to have shared this moment in time with you all, so I'm 
super glad that you were here. Thank you for joining me. And in a minute, you'll see my final version of this painting too. I'll put it up on the screen. And we'll see what I come up with. I know that it's quite different than what I started with. And I never in my wildest dreams knew that this was the painting that needed to come out, but here it is. That's the fun and the excitement of these kind of unknown journeys to have the tools to follow them but uh, not knowing exactly where they're going to end up. Sometimes at this stage, I know it's a little hard to see what's happening because there's a lot of mess on the edges. So I'm just considering cleaning that up a little bit so I can tell what's happening. And once again, I hope to see you guys on Facebook in um, one of the classes that I have a special offer on. Um, and it's been really a pleasure. I thank you for joining me.
scratching in some texture for the illusion of some detail in the foreground. Again, using that blue to lead the viewer's eye through the painting. That's that, you guys. Thanks so much for joining. It's such a treat to be here with you, to paint with you virtually. I can't wait to see what you come up with. I really hope you decide to share on Facebook. Um, and please be in touch. Don't be a stranger. It's so nice to share this experience. So feel free to email me with any questions or comments or ideas of how I can help support you in your own artistic journey. And um, until next time, take care, everybody.